I've got some, uh, I've got a confession to make. Uh, I've been lying to you for months. F equals MA is a lie. Well, it's not a lie. It's just not complete. And it's not, we call it Newton's second law. But that's not what Newton said when he wrote his second law. So, cheese whiz, what's going on? Well, I'm going to show you what's going on. And we're going to, do, in the process of doing so, we will define um, what we call the um, impulse momentum theorem. And we'll, obviously, we'll define what momentum is. Okay. Well, um, so anyway, let's get started on there. Um, we have, let's say we've got just an object in space, maybe a baseball or something, and we're going to apply a net force to it. Um, and so here's our net force. Now what's that going to do, that net force is going to do to the ball? Well, let's say the ball has a mass of M. Well, we've said this, this, this ball is going to be accelerated by this net force. I mean, we define, we uh, showed, we talked about Newton's second law. We said that the net force equals mass times acceleration. Well, yeah, okay, this is true. I mean, it's not a lie. This is actually is a law of nature that describes how acceleration and, and so on. But uh, we're going to, I'm going to work this out algebraically and rearrange it a little bit. And uh, you're going to see something kind of uh, kind of interesting. Let's, let's just assume that the force is constant, the acceleration is constant, and all that. So if the acceleration is constant, then I can say, well, the net force, well, what does the acceleration do? It causes a change in velocity. This is a mass times a change in velocity over a change in time. All right, this is how we defined um, acceleration. So now I'm just going to do some algebra rearranging here. There's nothing complicated about this. And the, the reason I'm able to do this is that the universe is mathematical. We live in a mathematical universe. That is, uh, the, the mathematical rules and algebra, hey, nature, you know, follows along with those rules too. It's, it's uh, kind of cool. I, it's, it's why the universe is comprehensible is because it can be described uh, with certain mathematical rules. So I'm just going to say, let's just multiply both sides by the change in time. The net force times a change in time equals a mass times a change in velocity. I mean, this, this is pretty easy, I think. And, uh, well, what is, let's expand this out. This is a mass times a final velocity minus initial velocity. Right, that's what delta V means. I don't need, I'm not going to expand out delta T with T final minus T initial. Just I'm just going to leave it like that. Well, okay, algebraically, uh, I can distribute the mass into the par um, parentheses. Force times time equals the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. Okay. Well, here's where it gets interesting. 
there's something going on here. There's some kind of new quantity here we can think about. If I apply a force, a net force to an object for a certain period of time, force times time, what I get is a, a change in this quantity over here, a change in the quantity that's the product between mass and velocity. And this, turn, this product of mass times velocity turns out to be really important. And so we have a name for it. The mass times the velocity of an object. By definition, it's called momentum. That is, let me rewrite that. Momentum is defined to be the product of an object's mass times its velocity. This is the definition of momentum. Mass times velocity. It has units of uh, oh, now, uh, uh, well, it has units of kilogram meters per second, right? Mass is kilograms, velocity is meters per second in the metric system. Now, for reasons that I don't know why, I mean, momentum is a really important uh, quantity, but we've never named the units. You know, like we, we have uh, mass times acceleration, we have kilogram meters per second squared, and that's called newtons. But we don't have a name for a kilogram meters per second, a, a, a unit for momentum. I think there should be. I don't know. We can think of a name of, of it. But so it's measured in kilograms times meters per second, not meters per second squared. That would be make it a newton. Uh, and we have a variable name for it. And this is where it's really weird. Don't ask me why, but we call momentum with a lowercase p. p equals m times b. An object's momentum is equal to its mass times its velocity. And that's just an arbitrary, well, I mean, not arbitrary. It turns out to be very useful. But that is the definition for momentum. Now, I'm going a little bit out of order here um, from the book, but I'm just going to say, well, that if we take a look at this expression right here, bring it down here, this says that the net force times time is equal to, uh, well, this, this would be P final, right? If we said the um, mass times velocity is the um, momentum of the object, <clears throat> well, this is the final momentum of the object. And this would be, oh, I'll put it right up there. And then M times V initial, this would be the initial momentum. So, <clears throat> Excuse me. Force times time is the equal to the change in momentum of the object. I'm not doing anything really hard here. I'm just kind of rearranging things a little bit. And then I've named something. I've named the product of an object's mass times velocity, and I've called that momentum. Now, we use momentum, right, in everyday language, and it's kind of intuitive. Um, uh, Momentum is kind of like how much stuff is moving, how fast, and in what direction. It's kind of a quantity of motion. I mean, if you want, if I want to say how much, you know, how much motion does something have? Well, doesn't it make sense that something that's twice as big has twice as much motion? 
you know, for the same speed or something else. And then, um, you know, or if something's, there, you have two objects that are the same mass, but one is moving twice as fast, you would have twice as much motion. And this right here, this expression right here, is called the impulse momentum theorem. Now, if you read the book, the book doesn't introduce this for another couple sections, but it makes sense to introduce it now. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce it now. Um, when we get to that, this is going to be a big deal. This is one of the big ideas in physics right here. But now I'm going to start going backwards. I'm going to start going back to uh, where I came from here. Um, I'm going to say, well, if you say, okay, change in momentum equals the net force over the, um, I'm sorry, I didn't need to do it that way. Right. I can start from right here. Let's solve for the net force then. The net force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. This right here, this is Newton's second law. This is what Newton said. Actually, he said it in a slightly more mathematically rigorous way. Those of you that are in calculus, you will understand this uh, pretty easily. If you're not in calculus yet, don't worry. This is as much as you really need to know. Well, this. Either, either way you want to, however you want to express this relationship. But if I took the limit and let delta t approach zero, um, then this would be a derivative. That is, the net force is the rate at which I change the momentum of an object. Now, this is Newton's second law. Um, this is not a calculus-based class. It's an algebra-based class. So, uh, but I like to show you, you know, the, the, the real deal sometimes. I mean, this is kind of an approximation of this. This works if the force is constant and the mass is constant and all that kind of stuff. Now, just for fun, I'm going to show you uh, something. I'm going to show you something um, that's totally not unnecessary for you to know right now, but it's cool. Well, if you said that the net force is equal to the derivative of momentum. What is momentum? Well, it's mass times velocity. How many of you are in calculus right now? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you remember the product rule. Oh, your hands all stayed up. That's good. This is a product of mass times velocity. So, you have the net force. Well, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. I do it like that. I, I keep the order the same. Does this look familiar to you? Right? Okay. Well, look. In most problems, we have a crate that's on wheels and we apply a net force to it and I give it a mass. What's true about the mass and almost all the problems that we've done? The mass on this object. The mass has stayed constant. And so what's the, so this is the rate at which mass changes with time. Well, if the rate, if the mass is a constant, at what rate is it changing? Zero. So this whole term goes away if you assume the mass is constant. So what is 
dv dt. What is the, the rate at which velocity changes? Well, that's acceleration. dv dt is acceleration. Delta v over delta t in this class is acceleration. So um, really, uh, the f equals ma is a simplification of Newton's actual second law, where we assume that mass isn't changing with time. But can you think of a situation where the mass does change with time? Um, how about this? Have you ever felt the for you, you ever turn a, a hose on, like a water hose, and you have a real a, like a restricted nozzle on it, and you feel a backward thrusting force from it, right? Have you ever felt that from a? Okay, well, what is what's going on there? Well, the velocity of the water isn't changing. With the velocity coming out of the hose is constant. So, so dv dt is zero, but what, what isn't zero? Well, the velocity is a constant, but there's a rate of change of mass coming out of it. So whenever you have a jet or water coming out of a hose or a rocket engine that's throwing mass out the back where you have a, a, a rate of change of mass, you've got a net force, but it's this term instead of this term. That's a little more than you needed to know. But it's kind of interesting. I always wondered, like, why do I feel a force from water squirting out of a hose? It's Newton's second law. But Newton's second law is this. Well, for our class, it's this. That's Newton's second law. We were just ignoring uh, this in the earlier part of the year. So anyway. Um, we have this basic equation. You can use this as the basic equation or this as the basic equation to solve problems. You're going to be given uh, some problems uh, where you apply a net force, you figure out what the change in velocity is, then you can figure out what the change in momentum is. Okay, but we are running out of time, don't really have time for any fun example problems, but uh, the, the big picture is this, uh, momentum. Momentum is defined to be an object's, oops, an object's, uh, let me zoom all the way out. Momentum is defined to be an object's mass times velocity. That is a new quantity that we are defining. If I have a net force acting on an object, the result of that that net force is the rate the, the um, is a change in momentum. The rate at which I change momentum is force, uh, which leads us to the impulse momentum theorem. Force times time equals the change in momentum. That's the impulse momentum theorem. So you'll use those ideas to to uh, solve. So the things that are in the little bubble, you know, little cloud bubbly things, they should be added to your equation list and memorize and all that kind of groovy stuff. That is all.